It's, um, it's a testament to the disruption that Asterisk has caused. It's, it's an enormous impact on telecom, how it's changed the world, the staying power. It's been around a long time. We had one of the highest number of downloads <coughs> for, of Asterisk um, in September. Uh, I remember 167,000 downloads years and years and years after it, it was launched. Uh, still going strong. Multi-million dollar products are built on Asterisk, whole companies are built around Asterisk. It's doing everything from little tiny PBXs to complex unified communication solutions to soft switches. Lots of companies who use Asterisk don't really talk about it. It's under the covers. Some boast about it uh, quite boldly. We, we love it all. Um, and although we don't know who the 25 millionth downloader is, it's quite possible you're here in the audience with us. And I'm going to talk about that for a minute. All right. So, uh, you know, we, we know we're not perfect. We're just a bunch of geeks trying to do a good job with the project, right? Sometimes we get it right, hopefully, more often than not. Sometimes we might trip over our own two feet. That's all right. But we are very committed to Asterisk. We spend millions and millions and millions of dollars per year developing open source software that we then give back to the community. Uh, we try and work on awareness and promotion, making sure that people who are new to telecom or open source hear about these projects. Um, we put on uh, events like AstroCon and the forums, uh, free PBX world that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Um, and we try and build an ecosystem so that folks like you can come and exchange ideas and talk to people inside Sangoma. It's a lot of work. By a lot of people, there are probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 people from Sangoma here this week helping to organize this event, talking to you guys who some of them talk to day to day through the forum. We try to be good stewards of the products and the community. And with that, I'd like to tell you that um, we, we do our best to interact with you guys in the best way possible. We, we take that really seriously. We put our money where our mouth is. And we promoted um, the fellow who was just up. Is he st Jared, are you still here? <laughs> Come on up, Jared. Jared is going to become the VP of open source for the whole community and be someone who, who you know and love. Um, you know about his background. Many of you have said, hey, if you're trying to figure out how to navigate this, you got a guy who, who's the obvious choice. Jared's done a number of open source projects. So please give me a warm welcome. Thank you, Jared. Congratulations. I'm, I'm thinking maybe we should trade pants. That's worth the colors. Thank OK, you. thanks, Jared. Um, so uh, if you ever have a concern, if it ever feels like uh, the, the interaction with you, the stewardship of the project is not going the way you want, Please know that we're doing our sincere best. Tell us, tell us respectfully. We love you. Hope you like us. So uh, the next point we wanted to share with you is uh, open source is a critically important part of our business as a company. I'm going to spend a minute or two in the next section giving you a very quick snapshot of Sangoma. But I wanted you to see that um, it is not just something we take seriously because it makes sense to do so. It's a fundamental part of our business. We, we have a number of pieces of Sangoma that are intricately tied to open source. So we care about it inside this corporation called Sangoma too. SIP trunking, SPCs, endpoints that attach to open source and asterisk projects, commercial ver versions of free PBX, commercial modules, services like training and support, gateways, cards. So the point I'm trying to share here is we're not perfect. It's a bunch of human geeky engineers trying to do our best, but we are all in. Okay? We want any <laughs> doubt in your mind about how important open source is and whether we're still committed or backing away or anything like that to be removed. 
And my joke last night at 1.30 in the morning when I was creating the PowerPoint deck for you is, you, do you know the Taylor Swift song, Haters? The haters are gonna hate, hate, hate. There's always gonna be someone who's cynical and criticizing and, oh, look what happened, that's really bad. Please know um, what we really want from you is let, let's not join them, okay? There are enough companies out there in telecom who hate open source. They're the bigger guys, right? They just wish it would go away. We don't need this group to be fighting amongst themselves about open source and asterisk. We love it as much as you do. If you see us making a mistake, tell us, but please know it was from a good place. We're all one community. Let's support asterisk and free PBX together. So I'm gonna talk about the format changes. Um, Sangoma has grown a lot, and I'm gonna talk about that in, in a second. And one of the things that means as Sangoma has grown and become a larger company, something we're proud of, I hope, I hope it makes you happy because the steward of your projects is now a, a more financially stable company. It means we have multiple constituencies. We have a lot of people who interact with Sangoma. A lot of different types of companies who interact with us. And we're trying to balance all these different diverse asks. And I'm gonna tell you about a survey we'd like you to take at the end of this year's Astrocon. And we got a bunch of feedback at the end of last year's event. And some of that feedback was, hey, uh, I use Asterisk to save money in my company or to make money, I'm a, you know, an integrator or something like that. And your event is so technical or it's only technical, I'd like to learn about how to do business based upon Asterisk. So we were thinking, how can we add some business flavor? Someone else uh, replied, this is a literal quote, um, love Asterisk, used it for a long time, but what about free PBX? You guys also do free PBX. Well, what, Astrocon and no free PBX con. Why does Sangoma have an event for open source, but not for the rest of the customers who are not part of the open source ecosystem? So the entire Sangoma organization got together and tried to figure out how do we meet the needs and wishes of all these different constituencies? And we put this new plan together. It's a very tricky balance. We did our best, we tried a few ideas, and admittedly, it was imperfect. That's a very nice way of saying it, right? The amount of negative email, we got, no, 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 it's bad, you changed it, don't change it, please go back. So we listened, tried to incorporate the feedback, added more open source content, a whole second track, and then we got criticized for changing. Oh, you changed the year, just sit. So we're trying our best. Please interact with us in a way that lets us do what you want. And so when you get the survey for this year's event, Tell us what you're looking for and we'll try and meet your needs. It's, it's in everyone's best interest. Um, we think we finally landed on a great set of talks. There are three different tracks, one business track, two open source tracks, and there are a large number of very, very cool demos this year, stuff we've never had before. Okay, I, I couldn't list them all. There's a lot of stuff going on. These were three that I thought we would highlight uh, please come and see a demo of Smart Office, which is an IoT access control demo. It's very revolutionary, replacing white swipe cards and fobs for accessing office spaces integrated with asterisk-based PBXs. Um, the most convenient, lowest cost. Come and see about Zulu. It's the UC client collaboration. Um, integrated with free PBX. Please come and see uh, a demo about SwitchFox. You can see here Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and there's lots more. I'm gonna talk about one more at the very end on my last slide. With that in mind, the feedback about free PBX, we thought about trying to do free PBX World and Astrocon together, but we've decided it's better to do two in a year, spread out kind of maybe six months apart. So we're planning to do a free PBX world 2020. We'd like your opinion about that. For those of you who only use asterisk, we get, that's not for you. If you use asterisk and free PBX, we're gonna do a second open source event. We'd like your input on that by way of survey. And now I'm gonna spend three or four minutes to give you a little bit of insight into what does Sangoma look like? Who is this company that, that helps manage uh, asterisk and free PBX? 
And there's, there's a lot of slide content here. I'm not going to go into it in detail. I'm really going to try and paint you a couple of themes. One is Sangoma has gone from a very, very, very unusual start to be one of the predominant companies in our whole industry. We have gone from $7 million to $140 million in just a few years. All right? It's phenomenal. From a starting point of a single product company, all hardware, cards that go in slots and gateways, and a declining market selling to only SMB, only in North America, shrinking to a complete portfolio with all of these different products in growing categories. It's the software and services business, um, SMB, enterprise, call centers, carriers, OEMs, global geography, customers in 130 countries, 340 people in 20 countries, 15 states. Uh, it's, it's a very impressive story, and it's intricately tied to asterisk and open source. So I've got a little table up there. This is not a presentation where I'm going to go through a whole bunch of cells and a pasted-in spreadsheet. But, but if you look, Sangoma has grown by 1,000%. And contrast that to some of the other companies you might know. Audio Codes, or Sonus Ribbon, or Avaya, or Mitel, or Ring, or 8x8, or Twilio. Sangoma is growing as fast as the fastest growing company in the world in our space, right? It's super, super important that we're all supportive of the projects and that you know how instrumental open source and asterisk is to that success. This is what Sangoma looks like now, $140 million in sales, 340 employees, $160 million in enterprise value. It's profitable. We reinvest all that money back into R&D and customers. We don't give any money back to shareholders. There's no dividends whatsoever. And my whole point here is, I know you guys don't care about the financials of some publicly traded company, but you should care that the stewards of the project are financially stable and able to continue investing in it to make sure Asterisk has a long-term future. And that's what we want you to know. Um, and the last point about Sangoma I want you to hear is um, open source is critically important, but it's one part of what we do. We have one of the broadest portfolios in the entire industry now. And just like I said about the financial table, I don't propose to walk you through every little cell in that chart, but across the top are a bunch of columns looking at individual product categories. Premise UC, UCAS, UC in the cloud, CPaaS, SIP trunking, call center, phones, SBCs, gateways, collaboration, video, UC client software. And, and this, is, this is Bill's subjective judgment. Please don't pick a cell and say, oh, I disagree with you know, cell F13. I think we're yet, right? It's just it's, it's a picture I'm painting for you. We think Sangoma has a good yes in most all of those categories and covers more of them than most of the competitors out there. All from that very, very unauspicious starting point and intricately tied to open source as a part of our strategy. And then the last part of my comments today relate to the most recent acquisition Sangoma has done. Those of you who have followed the company behind Asterisk will know we've done eight acquisitions in eight years. That's part of what's helping us to grow. Sangoma has just acquired a company called VoIP Innovations. Can I just have a show of hands? Who has heard anything about the, I'm just kind of curious about how many of you follow what happens. So that's what we thought. Most of you don't even know, right? Okay, so um, Sangoma is growing quickly. It's become one of the, the, the large players in our industry. Acquisitions play a role in that. We've just bought this company called VoIP Innovations. VoIP Innovations does two things. It has wholesale SIP trunking. So if you're an integrator or a reseller or an MSP or you work with Asterisk and use it to help your customers, every single premise PBX and other system like that has to connect out into the network. Let's not use PSTN more than we need to. Let's be connecting over the internet. IP trunks, we've now got an answer for you. All right? It has CPaaS, and that's what I want to talk about here. Those of you who don't know what CPaaS is, think Twilio. For example, I think all of you will know Twilio. One of the most successful um, uh, key requirements for CPaaS to work is a community of developers. 
There is no better, larger community of communications developers than the asterisk community. It's you guys. You now have a CPaaS product that's tailored towards you. We will be working on Happy Days, the CPaaS product from VoIP Innovations, to integrate it into the open source world. We need your participation in this. We hope you'll be excited about CPaaS. It's one of the very hottest product categories in the industry. Um, and if you would like to learn more about it and how you can participate, the last example demo that I want you to know about is tomorrow morning at 11.30. It's in the business track. Please come and see a presentation about VoIP innovations, SIP trunking, and CPaaS. Um, this is the survey we'd like you to take. You can follow along the agenda for this year's AstroCon on your smartphone. Uh, the open source tracks, there's two of them are in orange. The business track is in green. And I'd like you to now join me in welcoming Alan. Alan is going to be your keynote speaker. He's an independent analyst. He tries to help companies navigate and prosper and uh, um, uh, uh, gain this edge in, in tech. Uh, I think you know he's the founder of TedHack and Ted Summit. Um, he, he's a leader in programmable telecom. And you know, the, one of the things about, about keynotes is it's not pushing a company or a product. He's going to come and talk to you about open source and the role in the industry. So Alan, please come up. Join me in welcoming Alan. You want this? Excellent. Yep, I need that. Thanks so much, Bill. Okay, man. Okay. So we have the audio. Yep, I can hear the audio. They're just setting up the uh, presentation because uh, it has to run from my laptop because of Microsoft and how it renders fonts. There you go. We'll just wait till it gets started. It just takes a while. There you go. Oh, let's move back. Oh, wow, we've jumped. Now you're going to see all the slides. <laughs> there you go. OK, let's get going. So thank you for the introduction, Bill. I'm going to be uh, presenting on show me the ucking money. The F is silent, just so you know. So. All modern presentations must have memes in them, so we'll kick off with a meme, which is let's keep calm and let's follow the money. Now, as we look at the uh, enterprise communications business, because that's principally what we're in, the key question to ask is who pays the analysts? Now, this is an old uh, sort of uh, word cloud. It's just to show that the people remain the same. It's just the labels that get paid through uh, are keep changing. But the key in this industry is it's the big guys. Bill already made reference to it in terms of Cisco, Avaya, Mitel, Microsoft. They have the million dollar projects and they, of course, use the analysts to fill the industry with lots of noise. And also, now we have with Twilio a billion dollar run rate, we're in a situation where they invite the analysts in. The analysts sit normally at the front here. We don't have any analysts here, I can see. Uh, and they applaud as Twilio makes its announcements on something that actually most of the people in this room have been doing for years. But that's the role of analysts, misrepresentation, and creating lots of noise in the industry so people do not necessarily make the best decisions for themselves. Rather, they just go with a brand that they've heard of before. And let me just give you an example of some of the noise that's out there. And to be honest with you, most of it is utter bollocks. That's a British term. I'll let uh, the Brits in the audience translate that for you. We hear cloud. Cloud is the answer, and it's not. The real world is far more complex than that. It's hybrid, whether it be uh, for regulatory reasons, compliance reasons, or just operational reasons. The world is more complex than just a cloud-based solution. There's lots of fashionable theories. Remember a decade or so ago when uh, Facebook was at its peak of uh, uh, hype, and there were all the analysts talking about, ah, as an enterprise, you need your own internal social media network. Well, look where that went. Also, dumbass terms like digital transformation. Digital was cool in the 1970s. It is not cool in 2019. Transformation, well, let's face it, it's either two things. It's catching up 
or it's continuous improvement, that old 1980s term with total quality management. You combine them together, you know what digital transformation means? It means continue paying your big vendors. Don't choose somebody else. Also, there's false wars that are created, like Microsoft Teams versus Slack. It's not. It's Microsoft Teams and Slack. This isn't an either or. For those of you unfortunate to know what this acronym, I'm going to spoil it for the rest of you. It's Rich Communication Service or Suite. It's something that has next to no users that are aware of using it, yet there's a lot of hype and discussion around it. Other terms like API economy. API is a HTTP request. There is no HTTP request economy. There's a services economy, and there's a programmable telecom services economy. There is no API economy. That's purely a tool we use in the services that we provide to customers. Also, there are BABS. That stands for Bay Area Bullshit Artists. They come up, they stand here, they introduce themselves, they say, I come from the Bay Area. I know everything, you know nothing. Well, I don't come from the Bay Area. I certainly don't know that much, and you most probably know a damn sight more than me. Also, we see such crazy math out there. Somehow, Mitel plus Avaya you know, which is 2 plus 1.8, that's their enterprise values in billions, somehow magically equals five. When I ask, I'm told synergies. I also point out synergies means laying off people, so I don't know how value is created through laying off people. Other examples, 5G. 4G is good enough, guys. There's nothing magical happening with 5G. All the quadrants you see out there around UC, contact center, CPAS, are all biased to large US enterprise needs, which is not the same as the rest of the world. So again, analysts are pumping out information, not just noise, but wrong information for the majority of enterprise customers out there. Also, they like to run pay-to-play awards. Generally, you get an award if you're, paying, you're paying them. So all my advice is just don't put the awards up there. Just put your customers and have your customers saying how great you are, not analysts. Also, the flavor of the month now is you need to have UCAS, CCAS, and CPAS to be competitive. And the answer is you don't. You can have a piece. You can focus on doing UCAS, or you can focus on doing CPAS. You don't need to do all of the above. Again, it's all framing it, so you should be choosing one of the big guys. Another of my pet hates, artificial intelligence. It doesn't exist. It's used everywhere. It will exist in a decade or two, but today it's just software. Some excellent, really interesting math behind it, but AI does not exist today, yet it's plastered everywhere. Remember a couple of years ago when bots were going to dramatically improve customer service? Well, here we are, 2019. What have bots done beyond an FAQ? And then digital bloody everything. It's digital executive officer, digital transformation, you name it. There's digital applied. And as I said, it's cool in the 1970s when we had our first digital watch and TTL logic, but today it's a passe term. So what that means is for everybody in this room, We've got a bit of an unfair, unlevel playing field. Now, in that situation, it's important, and here's the second meme, so it is a modern presentation. Numbers are our friends, and that's really my focus with this presentation today, is to provide you with some numbers to help understand the market we're in and the opportunities and how to navigate it. So we are gathered here today, because my rant is over. I'm now going to be sharing uh, real information. We're going to examine and quantify the current and future states of programmable telecoms or programmable communications if you hate telcos so much you can't say the T word. Also understand why Asterix Free PBX community is vitally important to everyone in telecoms. Again, I'm going to give you some numbers to help you understand the percentages behind uh, adoption. Also, I'm going to share some results from a recent open source telecom software project survey I did. I know several of you here in the audience completed that survey. Thank you for taking the time. And then wrap up, because this is a Sangoma event. Look at how Sangoma stack. And already, Bill shared that with you. I'll help you understand a little bit better how that stack is going to help you win more deals, make more money, and serve the customer better. Now, who am I? Just a little bit of background. I'm an independent chartered engineer who wanders the world helping people and, as you could guess, pointing out all the BS that's out there. I started my career off in BT back in the days when telcos used to do cool stuff rather than buying overpriced websites and then selling them off on the cheap. 
worked for uh, Lucent Technologies uh, for International Biz Dev, was the managing partner for Cambridge Technology Partners, fixed time, fixed price, Unix projects, great fun, and then founded a company called Teltio. It was a presence API. It was ridiculously early to market. Uh, and we ended up selling through to Cisco. For the past decade more, I've been working independently, helping small companies and large companies all around new business, new services. And as Bill mentioned, I run a couple of events. TADHack, so that's Telecom Application Development. TADHack is the largest global hackathon on telecoms. We have uh, events that run all around the world simultaneously. It's a massive event, and everybody in the open source community should be taking advantage of that to get the message out more broadly, as there are some geographic black spots in awareness, understanding, and availability of uh, consultants. We need to get the message out far more broadly around the world. We really are just starting to tap the opportunity of open source telecom platforms. And also, I run a couple of events uh, around the world, TAD Summit, uh, our policy statements. So you go to tadsummit.com, look at policy, and we have a no BS policy in there. And we just ran an event up in Chicago, TAD Summit Americas. Have a check on some of the uh, panel discussions. You'll see they're quite fun to listen to. So I've said this programmable telecoms communications a couple of times now. This just sets out the landscape. So what I'm showing here is what underlies it all is open source projects, including, of course, Asterix, free PBX. Uh, but then on top of that, we've got what I term public CPaaS. So that's like VoIP innovations with uh, Apidays. So they offer APIs up to the public. What we have is some of the UCAS players claim to have a CPaaS, but it's actually a private CPaaS. You have to be buying their UCAS before you can get access to the APIs that are exposed on your instance of the uh, platform. And then a whole range of automation technologies, and then really how the world divides into enterprise comms and customer comms. And then the piece we mustn't forget, because boy, there's a ton of cash hidden away in that, is channel. So I'm just going to focus on two, uh, really just to show you some logo clouds, and then to show you a bottom-up build on how we work the size of the market. Okay? So here's for uh, the communications-enabled software projects. And here, of course, we have lots and lots of uh, open source projects. Of course, we have Asterix Free BBX, but we have you know, really cool stuff like VC Dial. Uh, also, we have projects over here, Camera Elio Open Sips. You'll be hearing from Fred later today on how to use uh, Camera Elio and Asterix. And using these projects together enables a whole range of really cool applications. It's not just Asterix, it's how you use these projects together is very important. Of course, a whole range of other players here, and there's some that have uh, built it themselves. And of course, one of the sponsors for this event, Wazo, uh, have been uh, doing some really good work in this space. Looking at the employee communications, this breaks down, well, yes, a lot of logos, and it's only the tip of an iceberg. We've got the guys that claim them do, they do everything in the middle here. We've got the UC, business telephony, phone systems on this side, and then all the messaging and collaboration on this side. Think of it as, this tends to be a winner takes all. An enterprise chooses one enterprise telephony system, but guess what? Quite often, they choose multiple messaging and collaboration platforms, depending on the different group's needs. So what are, and this isn't a complete table at all, OK? But what I've done is put it into a big Excel spreadsheet and then make guesstimates in terms of what revenues are and what growth are uh, and what the split is across as a service, and when I say as a service, I, I mean hosted or cloud, because to be honest, customers don't care whether it's cloud or as a service, you know, versus on-prem, they do. And also number of employees and how the revenue breaks down across these different players. So it's a bottom-up build. No fancy models, no MBA, BS. It's purely what are all the companies in this space, what are the revenues, what is the growth, and how does it split? And here's a rough sizing. So this is the total revenue, and then I've split into two. So these are the smaller companies, less than a couple of hundred million. These are larger companies, more. The smaller grow companies are growing faster. Now, when we look at this, it's like, well, OK, let's look at 2021. OK, you're saying, you know, like about 14 billion. But wait a minute. Everybody keeps telling me the UC market is 33 billion. Well, actually, I've missed out a ton of players in this. I haven't included a channel. I haven't included the telcos. Telcos have mobile PBX. They're one of the major channels in many countries around the world. And guess what? Most telcos consider enterprise communications to be commoditized. 
They're busy focusing on 5G, edge compute, augmented reality, virtual reality, and a whole range of other things. And for them, telecoms, it's, you know, it's commoditized. While actually, there's a ton of revenue. And here are the small guys. And here today, 2019, we've got over $4 billion. Now, everyone in this room here is responsible for the creation of that market. And guess what? Of those small guys, about 80% are using open source software, with, of course, the dominant projects being Asterix and FreePBX. So this is an amazing achievement. Relatively young segment, average age is only six and a half years of those companies. And it's four billion, growing to eight billion, and with the majority of the market giving up on enterprise communications. So over the next decade, you've got 10 billion coming on the market, simply because that isn't the focus. The telcos, they're focused elsewhere. This is a really exciting time to be in unified communications, where you've created a large global business that's going to double over the next four years, and you've got some easy revenue if you want to grab it. So that's just some numbers. Bottom-up build, nothing fancy, no models. It's just looking at uh, companies and their revenues. Now, I do a lot of work where people ask me opinions on all those different projects, those logos I showed you before. And generally, my opinion is highly influenced by who I last talked to. So what I try to do is something a little bit more structured. So I did a survey, and again, thank you to everybody who contributed to that survey. And I asked, which open source platforms do you use? So as you can see, Asterix came, oops, pressing the wrong button here. Asterix came top, then we have OpenSips, Camera Elio, then FreeSwitch, and then unfortunately, uh, Rescom is quite a small response. I did talk to the Rescom guys. This is just a warning on the difficulty of mixing open source and commercial, okay? They were, you know, strong open source project. They've now put a CPaaS on top. It's a CPaaS enabler, but it impacts the community. And this, you know, there's lots of reference, you know, uh, other examples we can see of companies that are struggling managing this transition. It isn't easy, but you can see the commitment that Sangoma is making to make this work. There's a couple of other projects missing, but I would say that's most probably my credibility in that community rather than uh, there's nobody working on it. Also looked at, so what management interfaces, solution wraps are you putting in there? So here we got, of course, as you would expect, FreeBX is the most popular management interface for Asterix. Uh, also, I see RTP proxy popping up quite a few times, so it's nice to see those guys there. Uh, we also, of course, have got SIP Capture, Homer, lots of usage there. Uh, great to see uh, Wazo, even though it's forked from Zevo, uh, showing great community commitment. And also, you know, and I apologize to the VC dial guys, uh, it was nice to see here, uh, you know, they enable contact center on top of uh, Asterix. You know, seven responses. So I was really happy to see uh, that uh, shoes we were getting really good coverage. But it's all these projects mean that Asterix is being used for a whole host of applications. People say, oh, yeah, it's PBX and enterprise scale. Well, first off, that's damn sight more than enterprise scale. Also, this shows a lot more applications. Now, you know, with all surveys, there's mistakes that, you know, I was doing it quickly, you know? Um, I put in here UCAS, CSAS. Now, of course, when you ask an open source engineer, you know, are you using your projects for CSAS? And they're like, no, I'm using it for a contact center. What I meant was contact center and all the different implementations of it. So that's the reason why you've seen zero there is simply because I asked the question wrong. We live and we learn. But again, this is showing you some direct evidence on just all the application areas for Asterix. And then we asked about the strengths and weaknesses and 20-year-old project. You know, I mean, that's a great achievement. And this takes time. People are betting their livelihoods. They're betting their businesses on Asterix. And that reliability, flexibility, community, and maturity takes time. That cannot be replicated. Time is the only thing that makes that. Now, of course, when we're looking on weaknesses, there's a whole range. And, you know, part of this is because a lot of the people are not aware of all the different projects they can be using Asterix with. As a community of open source telecom software project engineers, we need to get more people aware of all the projects and how you use those projects together. Which, again, just a shout out, Fred, for showing how you use uh, Asterix and uh, Camera Elio together. And as Bill has pointed out, they're here.
to show their commitment, to show to the community that they see this as important and driving this through. And I'm just you know, sharing what the results we got from the uh, survey. We also asked a ton of other questions around community. Uh, just highlight a couple of things because of time. As you can see, it's uh, active, easy, accessible. Now, this is a spread, and this is because of geography. Some geographies, particularly in Asia, South Afri in Africa, in uh, South America, there's a big gap in having expertise around asterisk free PBX. There's lots of opportunities to get out there, get people educated, and increase, because the more value we have created through Asterix, through open source telecom software, it helps everybody in the ecosystem. We asked a whole host of other questions. I'm not going to uh, go through them, but just to say, as you can see, this isn't a party for AWS and Google. Hybrid is the answer. And this is common across all the different projects. It's Ansible. So uh, just to wrap up in terms of a few takeaways from that survey, let's get more Ansible scripts out there. I'm a very rusty old software engineer, and even I struggle getting asterisks set up. And it's one of the easiest there. Kama Elio is just another language for me, unfortunately. But more scripts makes it easy for dumb people like me to get these projects set up. Also, it's not native cloud. It's hybrid, because that's what the real world needs. Geography has a big uh, difference. I didn't include that in the survey very well. Uh, but again, there's a whole range of opportunities there to expand. One of the things that a lot of people in Europe were a little surprised about was the size of the asterisk response. You know, in Asia, they just, you know, it's almost, it's a, you know, there's a lot of opportunity there. But again, even geographically in the Western markets, there's uh, a lot of education required. So there's still, I think, one of the things I'd just like to emphasize, much we can do together as a global community to promote open source adoption. So it's not just one project or the other. It's the projects working together to educate not just the people in this room, but it's lots of people in their 20s and 30s rather than 40s, 50s, and 60s. So moving on, just starting on the wrap-up now. So this is a quote from Barbara Mikulski, and this is one of the core strengths of being part of an open source community, is each one of us can make a difference. I mean, that's the whole point of being alive. If we're not making a difference, what's the point? But together we make change, and that's the power of what Asterix brings, what free PBX brings. You saw there in that simple graph a $4 billion industry built thanks to you know, focus on small, medium businesses delivering UC products. Across the whole of the programmable telecom space, which is based on open source, that's over 100 billion in revenue. So these are big numbers, but it's thanks to the people in these rooms, this value is being created by lots of people, lots of employment, rather than just a few large Bay, End, Bay Area enterprises making investors rich, rather than providing livelihoods for everybody around the world. So just to wrap up, on that noise, we've got to be careful because you can be aware of it. We can say, yes, that's BS. But that false narrative influences thinking. And I've been in investor meetings where there's a Bay Area BS uh, you know, analyst saying, well, Ring Central's won the market. This company has no chance because Ring Central's won. Well, that's wrong on a number of counts. Because trust, most businesses do not have an IT department. They need a local person, somebody in that city that they can trust that makes it easy for them. We can't underestimate for enterprises the importance of local representation, that trust, and making it easy for businesses. Price. Most people are frugal, okay? It's not about having the longest feature list. They want something that's good enough. That's the reality for most businesses, okay? It's less for a large corporation where somebody's making a decision on behalf of somebody. They just want to cover their ass and have as many features as possible so they don't make a wrong decision. Well, for most, especially small, medium businesses, price matters more. And as we've seen in the open source survey, as we see in the reality of everyday lives, it's hybrid. It's not just cloud. So open source telecom software, Asterix 3 PBX being the examples, underlies the majority of that communications, programmable communications market. That's $100 billion in value. And one interesting stat that I showed you, of that $4 billion that's uh, from small, medium enterprise, 80% are using open source projects. Well, guess what? When you look out on the web, 
On the internet, 82% of web app servers are open source. The other 18% are an evil corporation, but I won't mention their names. So again, some very interesting an analogies to the importance of open source on the internet and the open importance of open source in enterprise communications. Also, Asterix FreeBX is the largest uh, community. It has the broadest set of applications. Many implementations include other projects like Camera Elio, OpenSips, Wazo, VC Dial, and there's lots of opportunities as an industry together to you know, act as a community of communities. And the bottom line is open source is the best defense for the smallest, smaller providers. So ignore all the noise. The key here is focus on the customer. And now I'm on the home straight now. So we already saw this from Bill. What well, Sangoma brings is stability and experience. That's one and a half million UC seats across 150 countries. Already highlighted that uh, with respect to open source, you know, there's some big geographic gaps out there. Also, what's really cool, he mentioned they bought Appadays. It's not just CPaaS. I mean, that's the fashionable acronym. What they've also brought is a showroom. So anything you build on these APIs can get sold through the showroom. Ooh, one and a half billion UC seats. That's quite an interesting market to take innovation, new apps and services. So that's, again, very interesting. Also, Sangoma's focused on the reality of the business. Well, everybody goes cloud, 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 cloud. You see real equipment, as you can see. They're still talking about gateways, phones. You know, that's the reality of what most businesses are in around the world. It's not the uh, Bay Area view that's created. And there, it's where trust, local, easy, price, and hybrid matter. Also, as uh, Bill mentioned, they do have very well-stocked shelves, the most well-stocked shelves of any provider out there, which means for Sangoma's partners, you've got a great selection of bits and pieces that you can stitch together to deliver complete solutions for your customer. And they help level that playing field outside of the uh, Bay Area BS machine. So I will leave you with a quote. It's standing on the shoulders of giants. Now, at my university, that was st stated up on one of the walls, and it was attributed to Sir Isaac Newton from 1675. Now, I've learned that it actually was uh, Bernard Chartres from the 12th century, and there's the document. So it actually, it's a French quote. And of course, the French will say, well, that's typical of the British. They always take other people's ideas and claim it as their own. But my passing, you know, my sort of uh, thought I want to leave you with is being part of this open source community enables us to stand on the shoulders of giants. That is everybody in this audience. The free PBX, the Asterix community, Sangoma, so that we can focus on the customer. That's the last point I want to make. Is don't focus on the noise. Focus on delivering value to the customer and solving the problems that matter to them. So with that, thank you so much for listening. Oh, 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 oh.